Now we come to, uh, to our third speaker, which is uh, Manuel uh, Sandoval. Uh, so we go back transatlantic, we go to Mexico this time. And uh, Manuel, he, uh, he uh, graduated as a master for uh, manufacturing. So you see these manufacturing people make great careers in life. So it's a good, it's a good basis for many different things. And th I think he, you are a good example for doing very, very many different things in your life. You were in industry, you were in education, you, uh, were, you went out of Mexico, you worked in, in, in Canada. So you have a very vast experience, not only in a variety of activities, but also uh, uh, in, in different countries. And today uh, you're working for the uh, Mexican uh, Agency for International um, uh, Business, and you are the director responsible for export projects. So, thank you very much. The floor is yours. Dr. Soka said a few minutes ago that the future is unpredictable by nature. But in this morning, by the other hand, we also know that we need to know where the pot will be, not where is it. So investment is also a matter of educated guess on the future, and which and where is going to be the, the next generation of new, new companies. To speak about Mexico, I will need to tell you maybe three different stories in parallel, because Mexico is a mosaic in nature. So, uh, Mexico is very well known in terms of a uh, global hub for manufacturing, a world-class manufacturing hub, but maybe it is not very commonly known that also Mexico is becoming a leader in innovation and in design. Maybe, maybe not many people know that when they drive a, a, a Corvette, uh, the transmission was designed and built and manufactured in Mexico. Maybe some others don't know also that the next generation of platforms for heavy trucks are also designed by a man here, uh, Abraham Tijerina, uh, in Metalsa. So there are several examples on how uh, Mexico is becoming not only a design uh, facility, but also uh, several examples on how we see the future of the manufacturing. But as I told you, there's uh, a two-tails uh, two story about Mexico. In general, if we uh, compare Mexico in terms of GDP, Mexico is the third country in terms of uh, medium and high technology exports as a per percentage of GDP. And also, you may know that 70% of all medium technology exports of Latin America are manufactured in Mexico. 80% of all high technology exports of Latin America are also manufactured in Mexico. And that's an interesting story, but that's only one side of the coin. In general, Mexico is considered the 25th most complex economy in terms of the atlas of economic complexity, and that recognizes that Mexico holds a vast amount of productive knowledge and that we manufacture and export a large number of sophisticated goods. Those are the most important advanced manufacturing sectors for Mexico. And I, we can say a lot of things about the aerospace and how can the aerospace sector was built in just seven years, or the medical devices that Mexico is the leading exporter in Latin America and the main supplier to the US or the electric electronic, or maybe the automotive and auto parts. But I will stop here telling you this story about the success stories about the Mexican manufacturing ecosystem. And I also will start to giving you the main challenges for our economy. For example, looking at these sectors, the most important challenge is that each of the sectors, they have almost no connection between them. So the, we have leaders in exportation. We have tier one and tier two companies. Maybe 80% of all tier one companies for the auto, uh, automotive sector are now based in Mexico. But we need to improve our capability to add Mexican value. So small and medium companies will need to be developed in Mexico. 
in those terms, also the financing ecosystem in Mexico, that will tell you two stories. The story of the multinational firms in Mexico with a very competitive and productive story, maybe above the uh, average com uh, competitiveness and productivity of an American firm, but also in the last 10 years, the small and medium companies of Mexico are lowering their productive levels from uh, the, what they had 10 years ago, and now they are 6% less. And in terms of comparison, the productivity of a small and medium ecosystem of companies in Mexico is only a third of the multinational firms. So, in order to close the gap, we need to improve the capabilities of the, of the small and medium companies in order to rise their productivity levels, and that will happen if we think in the ecosystem in that way, as a, as, as a, a systemic approach. Uh, in general, we have a credit gap for the, uh, for the industry in Mexico of uh, $60 uh, billion. And in, that, in those terms, we need to improve our capability to finance projects in Mexico. This is the third time that you see the value-added smile. But I think that challenge, or the most important challenge for the Mexican ecosystems are, is uh, how to increase the value added in the manufacturing network, and how to convert the supply chain into a value chain, who uh, not only extracting value, but creating value in this ecosystem. Also, an important challenge for the Mexican uh, manufacturers is that Mexico is an exporter also of talent. 50% of all the Mexican PhDs are now working at the US. And that's a very interesting challenge that has uh, two kind of interpretations. One, yes, is of course the brain uh, uh, drain of, uh, of the Mexican talent, but also in another point of view is how Mexico is producing a big network, a North American network of high talented people working in centers at the US, but also having connections with the Mexican ecosystem. At this moment, the net migration of foreign and domestic to Silicon Valley in 2013 reached 13, up to 14,000, uh, the highest in a decade. Uh, it's interesting to know that more than 50% 50 of Silicon Valley's population now spoke a language other than English exclusively at home. And if you find this uh, situation uh, interesting for Mexico, that's uh, a, a global problem. More than 80% of manufacturers can, cannot find skilled workers to fill positions in the US, and globally, 10 million positions remain unfilled, mainly in these areas. Scale production machinists, engineering technologists, scientists, and product design engineers. At this moment, the positions on field are up to 40%, but in the next three to five years, that will rise up to 70% for uh, scale production and up to 45% for engineering, engineering and technologists. At this very moment, Mexico is now graduating more than 100,000 engineers a year. But that's an important challenge for our economy, since that talented people will need to be more in coordination with the industry needs. So that gives us a war for talent, in which Mexico, I think, it's at the center. And in general, when a venture capitalist uh, is analyzing a company and, ha and where to invest, they will invest not only in the horse, but also in the rider. And the most important part of the investment is who is running the company. In terms of uh, talent, uh, we can see that there is a shift on leadership uh, in, the, uh, in, in the globe mainly Hong Kong, the UK, France, and Australia, Finland, will have a, a talent bomb in their hands. And uh, we see talent leapfroggers in Latin America, Turkey, Mexico, Brazil, as talent leapfroggers for the future. 
Also, maybe these uh, figures are not uh, correct, but the high dependence of Mexico on the automotive sector will need to flexibilize our capabilities to enter not only to the automotive sector, but also for how to use the capabilities derived from the automotive sector to some other sectors, mainly in advanced manufacturing. Uh, I didn't copy that. It's a, a, a new one. But that's exactly how to create a manufacturing ecosystem in which uh, we need to take into account how to develop the, uh, the capabilities of an ecosystem in a systemic way. Taking into account now that the investment in China is moving to some other places, the process of reshoring, and maybe up to 25% of all this reshoring process will go to Mexico, uh, and uh, we think there's a big opportunity for investment in that sense. Also, we need to have a design thinking, and also uh, the worry of unemployment and how we must change our uh, courses and, and curricula in, in the univers Mexican universities to, uh, to, uh, to produce more uh, coordinated uh, talent people uh, related to the, uh, to the Mexican ecosystem. Also, we think Mexico is a living lab to create a framework for manufacturing operating systems, uh, mainly working in smart specialization, but not only for Mexico, but we think we can use the RIS or RIS platform also to analyze countries in North America and how to compare those capabilities with the capabilities of Europe and some other places in the world. Also, we are working on how to improve the capabilities of the corridors, North American corridors, mainly at the border. We have every minute that a product, that the products wait at the border in Me from Mexico to the U.S. cost to both countries $100 million and up to 500 jobs for each minute in the waiting lines from the Mexico to the U.S. And if you improve these capabilities and you see the corridors not only as part of one country, but to see a binational uh, flexible platform to improve the capabilities of the North American corridors, that will be valuable. Also, uh, we need to create a manufacturing operating system. We need to use Internet of Things and a talent management platform in order to improve the capabilities of these ecosystems and to grow the uh, the opportunities of receiving more investment. So in general, a flexible manufacturing ecosystem is an innovation ecosystem, an ecosystem in which uh, all the uh, high-skilled workers, researchers, entrepreneurs, funds, industry, and intellectual property will give uh, a, a synergic value to the ecosystem, and that's why in Mexico we, are, we need to work not only and how to improve our economic capability to attract investment, but also how to improve the quality of life of the Mexican cities and also the innovation ecosystem supporting them. So this is, those are some examples on advanced manufacturing success stories, but we need more. And I think the most important uh, value of this kind of ecosystem is how to be adaptable. And to think that the struggle for survival is uh, more related of the chances that an adaptable ecosystem will have instead of, of only being the stronger. So those are some of the questions that we are wanting to share with you. Uh, which are the Mexico's advantages for the development of the advanced manufacturing operations, which is the perspective of the private sector, what is the role of the government in the development of advanced manufacturing capabilities and competencies for a country like Mexico, and what is the experience of companies that have integrated design and engineering practices in their advanced manufacturing there. So, thank you. This is our presentation, and we are eager to receive some comments.
Thank you. Yes, Manuel, thank you very much for sharing with us uh, the experience of uh, Mexico, also the concerns of Mexico with regard to brain drain and these questions that the, you called it, I think, the battle for talents. Uh, I think it's a very valid point and a very, not only in your part of the world, a real uh, issue. It's also a European uh, uh, issue in, 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 in times of crisis. So thank you very much for that.